Welcome back guys, we're on episode 14 of the demo RPG and for this episode we're basically going to sort out a whole bunch more tests and I've already done most of the stuff offline as it took some serious tweaking to make sure we got everything right. I also found a few memory leaks in our code and we're going to go over everything and as you can see down here at the bottom left we've got quite a few more things worked out. So some other things I did that I also want to go over is I've started taking these .h files and putting their actual the definitions of the functions and stuff into associated CPP files and this is going to help reduce some potential header and include order problems that uh, I was starting to have while writing the rest of these tests so uh, currently I you'll see here in this test class we have we are fully testing all the functionality of abilities, all the functionality of buffs, all the functionality of our core stats, including our operators. Basically anything there's a function of, we test it out. That's that's the main thing. So that's the big thing you can do as you're going through. Now I'm not going to go through every little fine detail, but I want to at least explain how these are working. So let's just look at this stats for example. Core stats. I'm going to put it over here, give it a little room, uh, give it a little zoom. All right, so as you can see, we got a default constructor, so we test that. We've got a constructor that takes every stat, so we test that one. And we've got a constructor that takes a single stat and sets them all to that, so we test that too. We got a plus equals operator, we test that one. Minus equals, we test that one. And how you want to write the test exactly is up to you, but basically you just do the operation and assert that it is what it's supposed to be. For example, the default stats plus stats A should be all fives, and so on and so forth. And as we continue on, there's the equals that sets it equal to another one. We test that one out too. It also seems to work. So now when you run the stats, it should all work. And here's where things started to get interesting when writing these tests. These items, I was making tests for weapon items and for armor items and for potions and just testing out all the functionality and I came across some interesting scenarios that I really had to dive into and well let's analyze how this works here so when you create an item you have to use the item manager and this is somewhat breaks a few rules I found out because if we look at our items and we got items here it's Let's put it over here. We start out with an item delegate. Now I went ahead and got rid of the get the virtual void get type because we weren't using it anyway. So there was really no use for it. But we did have uh, we do have to make something in here virtual. And now there's a tricky thing about virtual functions and about virtual classes. And I'll leave a link to some articles down below on this. There's some there's some good ones. But basically, if you might be instantiating an item delegate uh, with polymorphism and you might delete, delete it, it needs to be sure to delete everything, you know, all the classes, this one and whatever it ended up being. So there's some interesting tricks to that. And basically, if you could polymorph this into something else and then call delete on it, you need to make sure you have a virtual destructor and typically this is public but we are making it protected specifically because we're doing some friend classing so normally they say if you're doing a, a pure virtual destructor you need to make it public if it's protected then don't make it virtual but we are making it protected because we have an item manager that is handling all this stuff and we don't want the end user deleting items ever anyway so it's a little bit of a different case uh, compared to what I'm going to link down below and what the standard is, but I think it works for our case. So we are breaking some rules in this series now. <laughs> Herb Stutter would be angry with us. All right, well, yeah, we're doing some sort of strange stuff with the friend class. Well, because this being protected and it being deleted down an item later, right here and this could be potentially cast to something else it isn't in here but when we're messing with this inside data sometimes we cast it to armor sometimes we cast it to a weapon sometimes we cast it to a potion and 
when it gets deleted, that cast could still be hanging out. Now, we don't ever delete that cast, but we might set whatever that cast is to a null pointer because if we don't, say if we delete this item, but we happen to have a reference hanging around uh, to this item delegate as armor, which I'll explain more in a second, that becomes a dangling pointer. So we never want to call delete on this from anywhere. The only place that should ever delete it is right here. And for that reason, we want this to be protected because we don't want anyone else to accidentally delete it. If we left it public like so, then someone else could delete it and we don't want that to happen. So that's why we're in a special case where this is protected. That's probably not going to make sense to anybody, but as you start to wrap your head around this stuff a little more, it will make more sense. And this is great practice for that sort of thing. So I hope you guys appreciate them taking the time to try to teach some of the more difficult aspects. So yeah, smash the like button if you don't mind and subscribe to the channel to keep learning and to keep hanging out with other coders and stuff. We also have a Discord. Just throwing that out there. All right. Well, I've done my advertising as needed, so we can continue. So we have the item is allowed to access this, and it's specifically so that it can delete this delegate here. Yeah. And that's what's happening right here. If we don't have it as a friend, then it can't delete it. Let's see. If I comment this out, hit save, this gives a little squiggly and says it can't access it. There we go. And if we make this public like it's supposed to be, well, it can access it, but so can everything else. And that's not how we want it because we have an item manager that does all the stuff and we don't want anyone else touching it because this is, you know, we're going to be moving, we're going to be doing interesting stuff with this data, equipping items, using potions and whatnot. And we have to carefully manage how these pointers are are doing things and we got to use pointers because we don't want to be accidentally copying and allowing people to dupe items uh, we're not going to have a broken system if we can happen not to uh, like most of the games out there we're not trying to be shoddy developers we're trying to be proper developers over here all right so that covers most of the changes here really it was mainly getting that sorted out it took some research and figuring out and figuring out that i had to actually break the standard rule in this case which uh, I didn't see a, a way to follow the rule and do what we wanted to do. So it happens, I guess. You got to do things against the grain sometimes. And I don't know what else to say about it. Then I, I just I just felt good breaking the rules in a way that I thought made sense. There's something there's some good feeling about that. That's hard to fully explain. And I will say that there's a chance that I could be wrong and that there's a better way to do this. Chances are there's well. Let's be fair, no matter what you do, there's always a better way to do it unless, well, you know, not necessarily, because if you say, hey, there's a better way, and then you test the other way and you find out it's less efficient or uses more memory or something, you know, maybe I am right. I don't know. I'm not really going through the, the full, the full testing of every option here. I'm just doing something that works and this works pretty good for what we're doing. And it passes all the tests, which we're going to walk through here in a second. All right, I'm just looking through this and making sure there's no other things. I did put a virtual protected destructor here in equipment delegate as well. Not sure if that's needed, but also another thing, now that we have a pure virtual destructor, that's why we could get rid of that git type because we got to have at least one thing pure virtual here so that this detects that it's a pure virtual class. Otherwise we're going to have other errors. So that's uh, yet another thing. And we don't want people to instantiate either of these. So no one can instantiate equipment delegate because it's got a pure virtual function and uh, of course that's armor so normally with pure virtual functions you have to override them and whatever is using it but with these destructors that is not the case which is really interesting because they are a special case all other virtual functions you do have to override in all the child classes or i guess yeah i think i said that right but with these destructors, you do not. So it's just a special case there. They're the only functions like that. Other than that, I think we're looking pretty good here. We still got friend class item manager and all of these, and that's as intended. Yeah, we could probably even, nah, yeah, we're good. So I think that's enough on the items. I'm going to close that out for now. And we're going to just walk through some of these tests and how they work. Now the ones up above are pretty straightforward. 
Uh, they basically just test every functionality of those, but getting to the weapons, where's where I really had to analyze what was happening here. So I think it's important to walk through it. All right, let's walk through the item or the weapon. So first of all, because our backpack and inventory systems, they all want an item. You've got to instantiate some sort of item. It can't be an armor or whatever. So that's the one we always want to be instantiating. And that's why we're not allowed to even create anything else. And that's why we got to use these special functions. Because if we go to, yeah, whatever, in our items, you know, if we go to our backpack, it's only items. And if we go to our equip section, it's all items. So the underlying memory is carefully managed. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse at this point. Let me know. Am I beating a dead horse? Or is the horse still, still going? But this is just really important to understand. All right, so we create a weapon. All right, I added a few new functions, but let's look at this create weapon first. And there's some other new things here too. So the create weapon's the same as before. It makes an item, it instantiates the memory, it returns a pointer to it. And now this pointer that we return is now under our management. We have to decide what happens with it. So it's important to know that uh, this data that it creates and this pointer that it returns we have to now manage. There's no one else that's going to control this from here. So that's why later we'll delete it. But first of all, let's just do some checks. We want to assert that the item's not null. And I made some new functions just to check. So people can check on the fly. Uh, if you have any given item, you can check. Is it a weapon? Is it armor? Is it potion? And just get a true or false back on any of those functions. So I went ahead and made those little helper functions here. Uh, here it is. There's the is item a weapon. Now all it does is it does a dynamic cast of the data and if this succeeds then it's true. Otherwise false. So this pointer is thrown away. This shouldn't leak but uh, that's a nice little check we can do and I just wrote one of those for each. You'll notice uh, some of the definitions I went ahead and moved into uh, the CPP file but not all of them. Some of them had to be like these equip and use functions. It was having some strange errors, something I was doing here. So they had to move to the CPP, but I hadn't moved all of them yet. But essentially these functions are all the same. It's just the cast is different uh, in all of them. So we also, so yeah, we have, we built all those, his item, uh, whatever, and you can pass it any item and it'll return true or false. So that's going to help us later when we're moving stuff around and just going to give us some, some quick functions to be able to tell what things are. All right. And now we're going to try the cast. We've also written some cast functions here so that, well, no one's allowed to do these casts. You can't just do these on the fly throughout your code because no one has access to this data except item manager. You can get a const version of the data with the get data function in our item. Let's go take a look at that. Back to item here. Find get data. There it is. So in the item, yeah, we have a const version of returning the data, but no one can edit that and you can't cast it since it's const. Actually, you might be able to cast it. Let me check something here. If we go uh, weapon star, I think if it's const, you might actually be able to. Let's just check equals, uh, what is this? A magic weapon cast it to a const weapon pointer. Wait, this needs to be dynamic cast. Typing the wrong thing. In this here should be uh, a magic weapon dot get data. So yeah, you, you can freely cast it to a const one. I actually didn't think of this before, but yeah. You just can't cast it to a mutatable one like so. It's going to complain and say it doesn't handle const. We kind of ran into that earlier, but you can actually get around it by just doing const here. But the reality is we don't want people messing with these if they're... This is actually okay because, well, if they want to manage their own pointer. But if the weapon, if this magic weapon gets deleted, this becomes a dangling reference. And if you try to do stuff with it, it's going to crash. So you got to be more careful. So that's, that's a thing to keep in mind, but you can do that. And 
we could just fully get rid of this get data so that no one can mess with it and that's kind of as intended and that way they have to use the item manager function and in fact we'll do that i'm just going to comment it out for now uh there's some things commented out uh we might we'll delete them later but really we want this item manager to handle everything about the memory as much as possible that way we don't have memory leaks if we get people playing around with it that are using the library the more freedom we give people the more likely they are to mess things up if they don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes and if they're using the library typically you don't want people to have to understand what's going on behind behind the scenes you want your interface to be clear and uh, not leak memory basically and do what it's supposed to do all right so let's continue uh all right so we make at this point we make a, a weapon pointer and a weapon of course is an item delegate but it is not an item let me go back to item here if you remember correctly this item doesn't inherit from anything it's its own class it's just got the item delegate data inside of it so yeah the weapon here is not actually an item which i know it sounds a little backwards but it's just the way we're doing things to be able to tell what type of item it is all right so now we got this cast item to weapon and this way we can get a mutatable version of it this will allow us to take this well let's look at this function here and what it does this is rather important so this cast item to weapon takes the item pointer and it takes a weapon pointer that probably should be null but it doesn't actually have to and here's the function cast item to weapon so if we look at this it takes a const item pointer in this is the input it's const because it doesn't we don't want to change it and then it takes a weapon pointer reference out now this is something that we haven't covered before a pointer reference wait this this was confusing to me for a long time so i imagine it is to a lot of other people too isn't a reference already a pointer why a pointer reference when do you use a pointer reference let's talk about this okay so if we take off the reference it's no longer this pointer being passed in it is a copy of this pointer it makes a copy if it's not a reference remember that this right here this n it's a copy of the item pointer it is making a new pointer and it's making a new pointer to out well if it's a copy to out then this is its own pointer we want it to be the actual we want it to actually be this one because it's an output but if you do this it uh it makes a copy of this pointer and sure it sets it to whatever but then this one that we passed in it doesn't do anything with it because this just this pointer just gets deleted at the end of this function so this doesn't actually work what you need is a reference to that pointer that way it doesn't copy it hope that makes sense but that's the reason and that's when you use reference is when you want the actual variable you don't want a copy of it and it's usually when you're modifying that particular variable and being that it's an output and not a return value over here that's why so yeah we could do it in a way where we return but i personally like this way better it's just i think it's clear enough and all it does here is make a dynamic cast of the items data uh to to see if it succeeds and it says out will be null pointer if the cast fails and yeah that's the case so we should do a check so we do this cast and then we make sure it's not null and then we can start checking things so that's actually quite fine and now that we no longer have that the get data function we have to use that uh, let's continue this but we'll write it another way just for sake of example this whole const get data thing is is really uh making me think about other options like maybe we should just allow it and we could we could entirely get rid of this but it is kind of nice to have a clear function that does it uh however yeah it's just not a const one so they could just edit it but you know that's fine if someone's making an rpg system and making their game out of this library they should be able to edit the items if they want to that should be under their control because maybe there are enchantments and stuff so i think that makes sense to give them a way to do that maybe we just want a const way as as well i don't know it's up for debate all right let's continue on so yeah we check and make sure the cast didn't fail and then we just check that all its stats are as we created it up here basically so it should have 
all this stuff. And we just check that. Make sure that its name is Magic Weapon, like we set it. Make sure all the stats are 5 as we set them. Uh, make sure the slot is melee as we set it. And of course we have to cast all this stuff to end. And that's because of how this testing library is made. It doesn't understand every data type, but it does work pretty well with integers and they just have templates and overloads to handle different types in this uh, testing library. And maybe they need to expand it a little more because like uh, this just turns into what an unsigned, I don't know, whatever it turns into, but it doesn't like it even though they're the same type. So it has a, a little trouble with certain types. So that's why we have to do a lot of int casting. It isn't exactly my favorite thing to do, but it works fine and it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, and then we check the min damage and the max damage, make sure they're what we set them to, make sure the is two-handed is set as we put it. And now here comes another interesting part that we really have to think about. So what happens when you delete a magic weapon? Now we probably want a function for this in the in the long run because we don't want people to do it on the fly because what if someone has this in their backpack or equipped and then it gets deleted what happens then a bit of an edge case there and we probably want to handle that through functions and we probably want to disallow this delete but for now we're going to allow it so if you delete this original item up here it's going to call the items destructor which is this right here essentially of course it's going to delete all the, the data but anything that has a pointer we need to make sure it also deletes that and we do so it ends up deleting the item delegate so thus this cast that we did earlier is now pointing to data that is incorrect if you reference the data now you're gonna get bizarre values of just whatever happens to be in that memory so it's not gonna be correct uh, so you need to set that to null pointer as well, otherwise it is a dangling reference. You cannot call delete on the weapon pointer uh, because, well, it's handled elsewhere and you're deleting a dangling reference. It's not going to know what the heck to do, it's just going to crash basically. But you want to make sure that it gets sorted out back to null pointer because otherwise it won't be null and it also won't be right so you got to make sure to clean up your dangling references that's what this would be here at this point a dangling reference and then we can assert that it's null as well and basically we can do the same thing for these other items the armor same thing potions same thing essentially going through the same functionality just testing that everything's correct checking that these casts of the uh his item are correct now these are the mutable these are mutable cast. So what we should also put in here is changing stuff and then see if the changes are correct. And we should probably also write, yeah, you know, we should probably, all, thinking about this a little bit, we should probably also write ways to handle this delete better because uh, we don't necessarily want whoever's using the library to have to call this delete and then they would essentially have to call on whatever character has it they would have to call that character's cleanup backpack method, and that's something we're gonna have to refactor for sure. So let's look at player character real quick. Player character, here it is. Let's just look up cleanup backpack, here it is. It's a private method, only the item manager has access to it. The only place we actually call it currently is on the use, uh, on this use function which is down to its own CPP file. Oh, we got rid of this, didn't we? All right, so we're gonna have to think about this get data since we got rid of it. Uh, but, you know, we don't necessarily, we can, we, we'll put it back for now. It's not gonna hurt anything. It is const, it's not like anyone can hurt anything with it unless they do a const cast. So just don't do const cast. Yeah. Uh, just too dangerous. All right, but the yeah, the only place we call cleanup backpack is when a usable potion uh, is quantity is zero. Then we mark for deletion and call cleanup backpack, which does well, it basically does the delete stuff with its special stable partition removed to remove it from the vector. But what happens if they have an item in the backpack and you just call delete like this? Don't. That's gonna break stuff. We're gonna have strange null pointer references so we need to come up with a way to better handle 
deleting these items and these mutable casts. This mutable cast is okay, really, because like I said, the end users should have the power to change items because maybe they want to have enchantments and stuff in their game and maybe they want to say, hey, you can uh, give your item plus strength or whatever if you do some certain thing in your game. So that's fine. But, you know, giving them the power to just delete the uh, the item, now that's a problem. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take this here and make it private. And it has friend class item manager. So only the item manager will be able to delete it. And then when we delete it, well, that's when we're going to have to, we're going to have to make another function for that to delete it wherever it's also located. So whatever our deleter function ends up being, so we're basically going to have something like static bool delete item. We'll have an item pointer item to delete. And then we also need to know where does this exist and what, and what player character is holding this or what, maybe we even pass it the backpack itself. Because in theory, if you have items out in your world, they've got to be in something uh, that could be uh, in a chest, in a, some kind of pouch, in your backpack. Um, and, you know, they've got to be somewhere. Uh, but we've been kind of going God mode and just instantiating them globally. So we probably want to think about how we're doing that. Because we don't necessarily want to be God mode and all these items in the long run. It's going to be, you know, it's going to require a lot of manual cleanup like this, which we want to kind of happen more automatically. So pack to delete from. We probably want to do something like this. And if we have this sort of function, we would pass it. Well, this is going to make a copy of the vector of item pointers, which since it's a vector of pointers, it's going to be pretty small, but uh, we could essentially delete it. And if we don't, well, you know, we could make it a reference here if we want to pass the actual uh, vector of items. So now this would be required that if you're deleting an item, you also have to have a pack that it's deleting from, which is going to assume that every item you make is in some sort of pack, which also means if we're ever creating armor or items of any sort, it assumes they're going to be in some sort of pack. And if we're calling move to backpack, we're going to assume they're coming from some pack or backpack or chest or, or something. Or maybe even we'll have like a, a, a world, just out in the world type chest, you know, maybe God, rather than God mode, we just have uh, like loose items, but we still need to, to manage those carefully. So that's probably going to be the next step is just cleaning up some of how these items work just a little bit more so that we can manage them just a little bit better and basically avoid having to do this. So that that is going to be the next step. Uh, we are going to comment this out for now and save that for next episode because we still have a lot of work to do with the tests. And, and now we get to the classes. I've only got the warrior class in here. Uh, oh, pretty neat thing here. You can see this delete is no longer allowed. And that is because we made it private. So only the, the friend class item manager here is allowed to do it. We're actually going to make this final as well. So we don't want anybody over uh, inheriting from item. It's a, it's a final thing. All right. So for now, let's go ahead and have a delete item. And sure, we want this pack to delete from, but not yet. For now, let's go ahead and make this function. And I think if I hit the hotkey, nah, wait, let's see. Create definition. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't understand it. So I'm just going to copy all this, go to our item manager down here, go to the bottom and just paste it in here. Don't get static on this one. It's in the item manager class and we'll we'll fix up this function as needed but basically all this wants to do is take that item to delete and it's just going to call delete on it like so and now if we think about this we also want this to be a reference to the pointer so that we can set it to null in this way i guess it would be you know free item delete item whatever you want to call it 
we could just go in here. Uh, you know, if we don't want people, if we want them to be able to call either version, you can do stuff like uh, define free item as delete item. Now this has a bool, I guess this would be void. So we could do that and they could call it either way. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work properly in a class, actually. Let's let's do a little test here. So let's comment that out for a second and just go free item, a magic weapon. Oh, I guess we got to go uh, item manager, free item. Oh, there we go. So you could write the function twice, or you could just do this to say, hey, if they say free item, they mean delete item. Eh, it's kind of a... A shady thing to do like that, honestly, but a lot of times people just call this free uh, rather than delete. So that's why uh, I want to say you could do that. And that's just an FYI. We're not actually going to do that, but we might rename this to free later. I don't know. It's just something we got to decide. But for now, we're going to make sure that you don't have to call delete like that. We'd rather do it in this way. We do still have to clean up this dangling reference. Uh, now, naturally, at the end of this function, this reference would go out of scope. So it's actually okay, uh, in this case, to just do this sort of thing. Uh, because, yeah, this is going out of scope. We already deleted its core data. No one else is using it. But just something to be aware of with those dangling pointers. So let's go ahead and clean up the rest of this rather than delete. We're going to call item manager delete item and let it handle it internally. This way, if we need to do other special stuff later to this delete, we can just change it in this function rather than anywhere else. So, okay, we need a reference there. It's important because we want to actually be able to set this item to null pointer. And yeah, stangling reference is going out of scope at the end there anyway. And that check, this check is redundant because any pointer you set to null pointer, it's, it's going to be null. It doesn't, it's not really a, this isn't a good test anyway here at the bottom. It's kind of my point. Hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have questions. I'm having fun. You guys having fun? This is my pride and joy right here. Breaking the rules, making protected virtual destructors. Yeah. All right. Well, there's a lot of work to be done still. We still need to test, equip, and use, but uh, I'm probably going to do that. I might do a stream or something later today of writing all those, but I don't think I'm going to make an episode of that. Basically, we're essentially going to be doing the same thing of just going through every function and writing a test for it. It needs to be done. There's really no getting around the fact that it needs to be done. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably just stream that later today. Um which might be your tomorrow. Now I'll release this episode and then I'll go live. I think that's how it's, I'm just going to do it. Uh, and that way, if people want to pop in and ask questions about the series or anything, that's fine too. But yeah, I think we're pretty much done for now. I've explained everything I need to explain. I'll push this code. Uh, what is this complaining about? Incompatible. Oh, okay. This needs to be void. All right, let's go ahead and run the code, run the test. I'm going to hit control R T brings up the test explorer. That's just the, the hotkey here. Uh, test explorer, as you can see. But uh, we have a build error. Let's address our build errors. Show output. Let's run our build. Cannot access private item. It's okay. So we have somewhere else what we're calling delete, and that's right here. So instead, we need to call item manager delete item i. All right, very good. So this should actually be a reference as well. And uh, let's see if that's happy. Let's go ahead and build it. Oh, okay. We're doing some other deletes. Okay. So here in uh, delete class, we're cleaning up some items, the equipped items. It's going to be essentially the same thing. Uh, let's just copy this for a second. So we essentially need to make sure we delete it like so using our item manager so this is good it just means we don't have varying methods of deleting and cleaning up all over our code it's just definitely a good thing
and one more build after making those changes. Looks good. Let's run our tests. Hit the Run All Tests button or Control R then V. And let's just assert that all these pass, and they do. It passes all the tests. Looks like we're doing pretty well. Everything seems to be working as intended. And we will be building those rest, the rest of those later today. Hope to see you there. Thanks for tuning in. Keep coding. Peace out, guys.